Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you some of the new features of Python 3.8. So 3.8 was released a couple of days ago at the time of recording this video. And if you look on the site here, you can download 3.8. So there are three features that I want to show you. And I don't think these features are features I would use uh, much, if at all. But you definitely want to be familiar with them because if someone else uses them in their code, then you will understand what's going on. Otherwise, you'd see the code and you'd be completely confused. So I'm going to cover uh, three quick examples on three features, and I'll give you some links in the description below so you can learn more about these new features and the other features of the language that were added in 3.8. So the first one is the walrus operator. So the walrus operator allows you to both assign a value to a variable and then return that value at the exact same time. So this will save you uh, a line of code when you're doing things uh, where you're going to use the result of that variable multiple times in the code. So I've created an example here and this is something that you would do in some kind of web framework. So imagine like Flask or Django. You'd process a form so here let's pretend like this is a view and first i'm getting the password out of the request object this is a dictionary but let's just pretend it's an object and i'm checking the password to see if it's complex enough so if it's more than five characters long if it is then i'm appending it to the database and then i'm returning a success message added user if it's too short then i just return a message for too short and at the bottom i run the function and print what it returns along with printing my database which is just a list so here it's pretty simple uh, this code is very easy to understand first you get the password then you check the password and then you append the password so you're using the password three times but with the walrus operator what you can do is you can check the length of the password and assign it to the variable at the same time so to do this uh, the walrus operator is just um, a colon and then an equal sign just like that and then what you are assigning to the variable so in this case requests uh, form get password so just like that so if I comment this out uh, this will still work so let me undo this just so you can see it working really quick so here I have Python uh, 3.8 so I'll run the script uh, walrus.py and I see password is too short and I return an empty dictionary. So if I make this secret, then we see added user and then secret is added to my database, which is just a list. So if I use the walrus operator, I'll get the same thing. So now I can take this uh, form data and put it in there. And if I comment out this part, then this will give me the exact same result. So I'm assigning the password to the variable called password, and I'm also getting the value of the password, which is secret, and I'm checking to see if it's greater than five. So it saves me one line of code. So I run it, and we see it still works the same. If I remove some of the characters, so it's less than five, then we see password is too short again. So this still works and we don't have to write a line of code. So I don't think I would use this because the approach before was pretty simple and very easy to understand. But uh, there are some cases where you would wanna use it um, if you prefer to have more compact code. Um, the only thing with compact code is I just warn you that uh, it can be a little harder to understand. So uh, at a certain point, uh, convenience features in a language uh, actually make it harder for other people to understand. So I believe in keeping it simple over using um, all these esoteric features of the language that you know only save you one or two lines of code. So it's up to you, but you can go to the link in the description below and you can see some other examples of when you can use the walrus operator. So the second one is uh, positional only arguments. So right now I have this function called multiply then add. So you have X, Y, Z, and then I'm returning X times Y plus Z. So because I'm multiplying and then adding the order matters. So if I change the order of these, then I'll get a different result. So you see here, I have this uh, print statement. So what I'll do is I'll run this and we see I get 70. So five times 10 is 50 plus 20 is 70. So if I change this to like Z and I change this to X and I run it again, I get 205. So uh, X in this case is 20, a uh, Y is still 10, so 200, and then plus five is 205. So as the creator of the function, if I wanted to have some flexibility in the future when it comes to the names of the parameters, 
then what I can do is I can make this positional only because the order of the parameters actually matters when you don't specify uh, X, Y, and Z. So if I remove Z, Y, and X, it will give us the result that it gave us originally, 70, because five is X, 10 is Y, and 20 becomes Z. So if I wanted to change these uh, to something else, so first let me uh, just add those back. And what if I wanted A, B, C? just like that. And I created this function and some user is using this somewhere. What happens for that user then is it fails because these parameters aren't expected anymore because I changed the names. So what I can do is I can make this positional only. So to do that, you just add a slash, a forward slash after everything you want to be positional only. That way it will force the user to make these positional arguments instead of keyword arguments. So if I run this again, we'll get a different error. So got an unexpected keyword argument. So I have to remove X, Y, and Z. And now if I run this again, we get 70. And if I try to specify one like A equals five, uh, we see positional argument follows keyword argument. That's actually not a good example. Uh, I'll make this C equals 20. And we see multiply then add got some positional only arguments pass as keyword arguments C. So I can't pass any keyword arguments even though I know the names of them. So it has to be positional only. That way, if I wanna change this to X, Y, and Z again, so X, Y, Z, then it will run exactly the same. So positional 70, just like that. So this is another feature I don't see myself using, but it does give you some flexibility with the names of your parameters. So if you want to change them in the future and you know that they're going to be positional only, then you can add that slash. And by the way, anything you add after the slash, so um, for example, let's say print this, um, you can have nothing and then so print, uh, print this. So anything after the slash will work just like before. So, uh, positional, we see it prints nothing, but if I want to pass in something and then run this with positional arguments, it works, it prints something. And if I want to make it a keyword argument, it still works because it's after this forward slash something. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you ever see that in the uh, parameters for a function, it's not actually a parameter. It's just saying that everything before needs to be a positional argument. And then the last thing that I wanna show you is uh, an easier way to kind of show uh, what variables are through f strings so this is useful for debugging so this is something that you would do um, you'd have two variables or any number of variables so i have name and favorite language and i'm just printing out the name that's in the variable name and the favorite language that's in the favorite language variable so if i run this uh, i see name is anthony and favorite language is python so it's pretty easy to do it's very easy to understand um but this can be done with fewer characters. So I have an F string that I'm printing out. And what I can do is I can just specify the variable, so name, and then I can add an equal sign after it, just like that. And now when I run this, we see name equals Anthony appears. So because I have a space, let me remove this space so it's a little easier to see everything that's going on we have name equals Anthony. So as long as you're not too concerned with the format, uh, you can print out the value of the variable along with its name uh, for debugging purposes a lot faster. So I'll do the same thing for the favorite language. So favorite language equals, and then we see name equals Anthony, favorite language equals Python. So let me comment these out and I'll remove the equal sign for one just so you can see what happens. And this time we get name equals Anthony because I have the equal sign, but for the second, we just get Python. We don't see that it's the favorite language variable because we didn't add that equal sign. If we add it back, then we can see 
the name of the variable again. So this is really useful for debugging. So this is the only feature I see myself using. It kind of depends on the case, but um, this isn't something that would normally make it to your production code. This is just for debugging. So those are the three features I want to show you in today's video. I We'll put some links in the description below so you can take a look at the uh, other examples that they have and also some of the other minor features that were included in Python 3.8. So if you have any questions about these features, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.